Hey there, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. We're located in Northeast Florida, where we do things from on-demand learning, virtual mentoring, hackathons, you name it, we do it uh, across a large variety of technology products. Uh, in this week's video, what I want to do is focus on Power BI using a DAX measurement to accomplish the task of if you want to do some kind of rolling aggregate uh, of your values, whether you want uh, maybe over the last seven days, you want to know what was the average amount of policy claims that have come in for your business, or what was the total sum for the last seven days of customer complaints that you've been dealing with, whatever the case might be. Uh, we're going to do ours on profit for um, just some data that I've got here. And what I'm going to do is set up a measurement that allows me to see the last three months totals no matter where I'm at within my visualization, whether I'm at the date level, the month level, the quarter level. So we're tapping into a DAX function that is time series intelligence. And just something to know if you decide to use this, you must have some kind of date table within your Power BI report. Uh, and that date table is either one that you've made on your own, uh, or if you're using the auto date time function within Power BI, that will work as well. So let's head on over and take a look at the, the data that we have, and let's build out this, uh, this aggregate here. So what we've got, as you can see over here on my left-hand side of the screen, I have the calendar year, the English month name, and the total profit for every month. And what my ultimate goal is going to be is that when I get, and I'm looking at September of 2005, it's always going to backdate and give me the last three months. And then the same thing when we get to this, uh, November of 2005. If I went to November 2005, my ultimate goal is to give me what were the last three months totals. And this is going to work on both the date level, the month level, the quarter level, and the year level. So the first thing I'm going to do, the way I like to do my rolling, uh, my rolling totals here is I like to use variables. I think it's just easier to debug at the beginning, make sure everything is working appropriately. Uh, and I could easily just say, hey, here is the formula. And if that's what you really want, just kind of go to the end of the video and you can check it out. Uh, but I really like to teach about and explain what's happening in the background. Uh, so let's start building this out. So what I'm going to do. I've made a separate table over on the right hand side for a very special reason. It's going to be my testing table, but I'm going to get rid of it in a few moments once we get this going. So I'm going to make a new measure. So I've just right clicked. And again, when you make measures, uh, they can be on any table that you want. So if you're new to Power BI, where you put a measure is not going to affect uh, the values that you are getting returned. So now that we have a measure, let's start defining what we want it to do. So I'm going to make this bigger so we all can see. And I'm going to call this my rolling three month total profit. All right. And as you can see, I already have a total profit measure that I've made prior to this video. So I'm going to hit shift enter to go down. So whenever you hit shift enter and DAX, it takes you to a new line and I'm going to declare a variable. And the way we declare variables, we just do V A R and then space it. And then I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call this my start day. Because what I need to do is I need to tell Power BI when to start doing this calculation. Uh, so if I'm doing a rolling three months, wherever I'm currently at, I want it to go back three months in time. So that's why I'm calling a start day. The next thing we'll need after this is the end day. And then finally, we tell it what to do with those dates. And what we're going to do is get the total profit. So as we can take a look, I now put an equal sign here. And now we start putting it in. So I'm going to use the very first time intelligence function that we need, which is date add. Uh, and date add, as you can see, it will move the given set of dates by a specific interval. So the first thing we have to do is give it the dates. So my dates are in the date table in the date column. Now I put in how many intervals I want to go backwards. So I'm going to go back three, then a comma, and I'm going to do this in terms of months. But you can see what this calculation I'm about to make, you're going to have so much freedom and control over it if you want to do it uh, the last two years worth, or the last four quarters. I'm just keeping this in terms of doing the last three months. So once we have that set, as like I mentioned, I like to test these things out. Oh, and there's an extra comma there. All right. So and nope, I forgot to get the month. There it is. All right. So now whenever you declare variables in a DAX function, in order to return or in order to execute something that's going to be displayed in your visualization, you have to go and write in return. And so I want to return the start date. Let's make sure the start date is even doing its job. 
So now that I have this, I'm going to hit enter. We're not getting any errors. That's always good news. And let's bring in rolling three months onto this visualization. So I'm just going to drag it onto the table and we're going to see that we have a problem. Uh, and this is always good when troubleshooting. It says you have a table of multiple values was supplied where only a single value was expected. And here's the reason why. It's all because of the function I used, which is called date add. And what date add does is it's going to move me back three months, but it doesn't provide a single date. It's going to provide a column of dates. You might be saying, why in the world would it even do that? Well, it's all because of the different times we're going to be at within a visualization. We might be at the quarter level, the year level, the individual date. So it's going to take us our current selection, take us back three months and give us a set of dates there. So what do we want to do with that? Well, now that it has a set of dates, so let's say we were in April and we say go back three months. Well, it's going to give us all of the dates for January, every single one of them. We want to get the last date of January. So we're going to put in front of date add the next piece to the puzzle, which is the last date of the dates that were returned. So we're going to take the function, we're going to put in last date, and then the dates are what are being returned from the date add function. So I'm going to close this off with the parentheses. We'll hit enter, and now we should start seeing some good news here. We're returning dates. So when we were at April, it went back uh, when we're at April 1st here, it went back and then gave me the last date that it saw from that selection. Now, what we see, we might think we're done here, but we're really not. So let me really explain this. I'm going to come all the way down. I'm going to come on down into March. So let me find March in the next year. Here we go. So March 31st. So if we think about this, <clears throat> with March 31st, if I want the last three months, all right, so let's say I am uh, on March 31st, I want the last three months of, of data, that would be from March 31st all the way to January 1st. But notice what this is returning. It's returning December 31st because it went back three months, which was in December, uh, and it took the last date that we were at that level. That's not what we want. It actually is going to give us one extra day. Uh, so this is the reason. And then we can, I'll show it even further here. Let's just, if that's not making quite enough sense, I'm going to get rid of, I'll come off screen here. I'm going to take this visualization, go to the date, the date table, and I'm going to swap out instead of date, I'm going to bring in the month as well. So let's get rid of date. And we're going to come in here and we are going to bring in the English month name. All right. So here again, January, if we are at the end of January, I would want all of January, all of December and all of November. But notice what it's giving me. It's also going to include October 31st. So this is why we have to use something else on top of this. So let's come back to our measurement. <clears throat> And let's bring this down. So it's good, it's going back three months, but now we need to advance it by one day. So in front of last date, we are going to use the function next day. <clears throat> so now it'll take that entire date that was returned and it's going to advance it for us one more day. And now when I hit enter, now we should be in business. So if we want everything up through the end of January, it's going to start off at November 1st. Again, for February, it's going to start off at December 1st. So that's the hardest thing I think to do is that start, that getting that start day. Uh, because of the date add function returns a column of values, we have to say get the last one from that selection. So as you can see here, when we are on January, it took us back three months and it gave us the last date in that month selection. Uh, if we do this, and let's just test, I like to explain a lot here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of English month name and I'm going to bring in instead quarter just so we can see it really working. So let me find our calendar quarter over here. There it is. Let's add it in and I'm just going to move it. So we can see for the calendar quarter of one, that's for all of quarter one, January, February, March. The start date 
is now January 1st because it knows the Power BI, the data time intelligence that it has, it knows what the quarters are of our calendar year. Uh, so we've got the start date. What's next? The next part is to get the end date. So I'm going to come back up to the top here and let's add some more code. And the end date is way easier, way easier. So I'm going to declare another variable and I'm going to call this my end day. And so it's going to equal. Now this one's the nice part. We don't have to worry about going back or going forward. We're just simply saying use where we are at, which seems pretty obvious. So if I'm at January 2nd, that should be the very last value that you're adding up for me. However, what if we're at the month level? Well, if we're at the month level, we have to tell Power BI what date to use within our month. Or if we're at the quarter level, what date to use when you're in quarter two or quarter three. This is here again where we're gonna go into that last date function. So I'm gonna say wherever I'm at, I want you to return the last non-blank date of my current filter context within the visualization. So to see if this is working, I'm gonna, instead of returning the start day, let's return our end day. So our end day right here is our variable. We'll hit enter. And again, we're doing all the hard work right now. Oh, things look good. When I'm at quarter one, it's giving me March 31st because it found the last non-blank date within quarter one. Uh, if I get rid of calendar quarter and instead I come up and I put in the English month name, then we are good to go. January, February, March, and it's gonna also uh, account for your leap years as well. So our end day is now uh, working picture perfect. So now what do we wanna do? We wanna do the actual calculation. We wanna return the profit. So this is gonna be the last thing that we now need to do. So let me come on over back to our measurement. And instead of returning the start day and end day, we're gonna be using those in our measurement. Now it's time to get the profit. And if we think about it, if you have any DAX experience and know what filter context is, when we just put in the profit in that far left-hand visual that I started with, notice that the profit was always being filtered down by that exact year and exact, that exact month. However, what's our ultimate goal? We're trying to go backwards, which means we can't use the current filter context. We have to modify it, which is why we use the calculate function. So I'm gonna say calculate, which allows me to take an expression and modify the original filters from the visual or anything coming from outside of the visual. And so what I wanna do is I wanna return my total profit measurement, and now I need to put in my filters. And so my filters here is another time intelligence function. It's called dates between. And what dates between do is they allow you to give a start date and an end date. So the first thing we have to do with all time intelligence stacks is give it the date column, wherever that lo is located. And again, mine is in the date table, date column, but they don't have to be named that way. That's just where my data is. And then I'm gonna do comma. Now I give it the start day, which is the start date. So this is why I use those variables, making it nice and easy. And we were able to troubleshoot all the way through. End day, let's close it off. One more parentheses and then we'll hit enter and we should be good to go. Let's make sure we're getting some, some results over here. And the reason we're not getting any results over here is because all I did was put in, I wanted to show this, is I just put in the English month name. So when we write English month name, that's January for all time, for however many years of data we have. So it, does, it can't do anything for me here because this needs to be broken down into, um, into a smaller unique fashion, like the month attached to the year. So this is again where that filter context is coming up. So I'm gonna get rid of this table because it was just for testing purposes. And so we can make the other one a little bit larger. And now with this table, which we currently have, I got the calendar year, the English month name, the regular profit. Let's see if our rolling three month profit, bringing it in, if we are getting the results that we wanted. So as we come on over, July, August, September, when we get to September, yes, if we add those three months, that gives us $583,000. And notice for July and August, July just gives me, there isn't anything prior to July, so it's just gonna give the values up until that point. When we get to August, it's gonna take July's and August and add them together. 
And then again, when we get to October, now what's going to happen? Is this going to take August, September, and October and spit the results out right here? And it doesn't, like I said, just work at the month, even though I know we called it the rolling three month total. This will work on a smaller granularity as well, as long as we can have three unique months within it. So I'm gonna get rid of English month name at this point, and let's bring in the quarter instead. So in our date table, let me come on up and bring in the quarter. All right, and now we can see when we come on over here and zoom, we're getting the exact answers that the total profit is for the quarters because the rolling three months would be all three of those quarters built in. Uh, and if we wanted to go even further, I could bring in the dates uh, and we could see, uh, we could add up all 90 or, or 89 or however many days were within that last three month time span of our individual dates. Uh, but don't want to validate that here. So hopefully that made sense. I'm going to put that formula up here one more time. And just so you know, once you have this, um, you can modify it. So if you didn't want to be the last three months, but you want it to be the last two months, I just simply come in here. Instead of minus three, I put in a minus two months. Um, and it says it's as simple as that. So hopefully this was beneficial and helpful to you. Hopefully you understand the DAX and why we used it and how it works. Uh, but if you just simply came to the end of the video to get that formula, uh, that's completely cool too. Uh, please like, subscribe below. Let us know what you want to see more about. Uh, and I hope to see you in another video.